Well, thank you so much for helping with my project. Uh, could you say a little bit about yourself? Hi, Nathan. Thanks for thanks for the opportunity. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so I we we run okay. So we are I'm I'm Hungarian, and there's a team I am part of, as you can see, Space Junkie, and we are kind of space communicators in Hungary. So we absolutely big fans of rocket launches and space news. We have a website where we write. Uh, the space news in Hungarian language because uh, a lot of people don't speak Hungarian. Um, sorry, English, and and also obviously we 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 do some sort of uh, streaming service where we invite um, scientists or people who are really good in their fields uh, hang, happen to be Hungarians. So let's say we interviewed a few guys who worked very close uh, on. Uh, James Webb Space Telescope and the commissioning phase and all these things. So yes, we are we are absolutely immersing ourselves into this topic. And also, just one cent in brief, um, we've been down to Starbase last summer, so we've seen the whole Starship uh, mania, and we got infected officially. <laughs> Can you uh, describe uh, how your interest in space got started? It's it's a weird one because because a lot of people I think they kind of have the uh, the attraction towards this topic from childhood, and in some degree I I did as well, but it took me to my thirties, mid thirties when I started astro uh, amateur astronomy, I started astrophotography, so I photograph um, planets, sun, the moon, and then it just went into a side way, kind of, because I started imaging the International Space Station. So maybe the international community knows me as Space Station guys, um, or just Space Station guy, because uh, I created this website where now all kinds of people from all over the world sending their amateur photographs of the International Space Station. I think that's the largest sort of collection of amateur manually and automatically tracked uh, international space station photography, which I'm really proud of. So I think this is where it started, and then it just it just took off with the rocket launches and and the foundation of the channel space station. Uh, sorry, space junkie. And you mentioned that you uh, have uh, space junkie uh, in the Hungarian language. Um, when trying to, I guess, uh, educate and inspire uh, people in Hungary. Uh, what are the types of things that get people excited? I think definitely uh, the, the the new wave of rockets that being built. I think a lot of people pay attention to reusability, which is very good. I think we're trying to raise awareness that how important it is on the long run that we not keep on throwing away, you know, rockets that that need so much resources to to be being produced also i think um starlink and and in general satellite and and i think debris around earth that's 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 that can grab uh, the attention of our viewers um space exploration definitely i mean i mean the wild stuff that coming out now from james webb and other sectors is just unbelievable so i think there are so we are living in such an exciting times because there are so many things happening right now and it's fascinating it's fascinating i'm trying to remember um has hungary signed the artemis accords Ooh, i should know i don't think we did just yet I think we did not, um, but I but I think it's 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 coming soon. But I might be wrong. But I think we did we didn't yet, um, which I don't understand why. I think it's it's just a question of time. Um. So you obviously probably know that NASA is planning to send astronauts back to the moon, uh, so it's probably pointless asking you that. But I get a question. Um, if you were to randomly go up to say 10 people in Hungary and ask them, did you know that we're going back to the moon? What's your sense of how many of them would actually know? That's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure I can I can give a right answer. I have a feeling that uh, maybe half of them wouldn't know at all. And maybe 
some from that five left or fifty percent left, maybe they heard something. And I think there's a great chance that you will find people who just say, yeah, sure, I did hear, hear it and it's it's great. But I think there is so much to do in general um, to actually make it more widely known, um, let alone some people don't even believe that we've been there in the first place. So, so there is a lot of work to do, I think. Yes. I have my experience even going uh, to people here in Houston where we have the Johnson Space Center mm -hmm. where the astronauts train and stuff is that um, maybe only about two out of those 10 would actually oh, wow. know. So. Oh, wow. And that's in, in, in such location like Houston, which we covered last year as well because we traveled from Florida to Houston and then to Starbase. And it's a magical place. It's like... I think you have like Avenue named like NASA Avenue or some or Rocket Avenue or something like that. So, I mean, it's it's everywhere, basically. And it's, yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. I think a lot of it might come down to how we get our news now instead of having mm -hmm. a newspaper that everybody reads and, uh, you know, it's, it's nightly news channels that everybody sees. You know, a lot of people get their news online and it's very customized to their interests. Do you think that it's it's partially down to the media or the people's interests or just how these things are communicated? Because I'm 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 not entirely sure to be honest. Um, that we try. I, I think it has more to do with um, just how much news is out there and the need to mm -hmm. being able to be selective about it. I bet you though that everybody knows about the Titanic submarine, the Titan. Yeah. Which is yep. which is kind of interesting, uh, you know how news like that really grabs people's attention. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of. But I think it's it's something to do with with the sensationalism and and just the negative news always cut through much quicker. I bet you, if something happens at the ISS tomorrow, there's a fire or something which they can contain, but but it's a serious problem. Everybody would know about it. And, and and it's a sad thing. It's a sad thing because we we should celebrate the achievements, not the failures. And I think we our focus is just wrong. It's just not channeled in the in the right right way. Again, communicators has I think so much to do to make people understand that how much space exploration is affecting our lives. We just had a guest a couple of days ago. She's a she's a planet planetary scientists from Hungary and she's moving to Tokyo. Her name is Bernadette Pal. And we just had a talk of, uh, particularly about this topic that it's so important to highlight that what kind of technological advancements we can be thankful just due that the, the fact that we've been doing space exploration from you know, from water purification to solar panels. And, and the list is just so long that wouldn't exist if we don't challenge ourselves in space. So I think it's it's very important for people to know that that it's 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 our future. It's our future. And you know if if when you talk to people are uh I guess what kind of coverage have you done about Artemis uh, on Space Junkies and and the, the other space communicating avenues that you have? Uh, coverage, you said. Uh, yeah, what kind of articles and like, oh, how yeah. much do you talk about Artemis? We do a lot, a fair amount, a fair amount. When, when, when there is something uh, from either the NASA site or, I mean... It's been delayed for so long, and and that 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 always made a great sort of headline <laughs> as a news that ah, is delayed again, again negative news always makes it uh, just move people out from their comfort zone. So you know, it's suddenly we all becoming an expert, an armchair expert. But I think I think uh, the launch we covered. Uh, we streamed, live streamed the launch, um, the aftermath. We, we made several videos about, let's say, the camera system or the or the communication system, why why it's, the resolution is not that high yet. But for Artemis, from Artemis 2, I think uh, they're already going to start streaming in 4K. So 
so so these these are the things that I think mesmerizing people and and this is I give you an example. I think if you ever watch the rocket launch, I bet you that the SpaceX coverage uh, coverage is just just blowing you away because of the feed, the live feed, the camera views we can have. And and I think even in the ancient Romans, they knew that you need to give bread to the people and circus. So you need to show them this kind of fun side of it when when there's a a, a kid and they're gonna see it and say, "Oh, I want to work there. I wanna, I wanna work on that program or I pr- problem or I wanna solve those kind of things." And it's inspirational. And I think that's why it's very important for let's say from NASA that they are really showing beautiful photos, beautiful footages. And obviously, we are sharing all of these whenever anything comes out, either on our channel or or in a written form. So very important, and we talk a lot about it. Well, usually after I tell people that we're going to the moon, they have questions about why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, why now? And uh, do you have some good answers to that? I think I think those people who who have these questions, they need to watch uh, John F. Kennedy's speech. That's that that sums it so well. That why climb the highest mountain? Why to do all those challenges? I mean, I think we forgot in the daily grind that we are explorers and we've always been explorers, and it's in our DNA to go and see things that that's hard not not because it's easy but because it's bloody damn hard and 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 i think that's that's the beauty of it thinking back to me my example i remember when when i saw somebody's international space station photo and and i started discovering that this is really really difficult because it's down to so many factors but i think that pulled me even more because that's an inspiration. And I and I love that a lot of people think that way. That that yes, if it's a challenge, count me in. I'm I'm going, I'm doing it. And it's gonna be really hard for the first settlers on Moon or Mars or wherever is going to happen. It's 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 a damn challenge. But I think that's why they are going. If it would be easy, probably they wouldn't do it. That's that's a good point. And when you think about like the future of humanity and what what our goals should be, you know, being mm-hmm. explorers and stuff, when you look out uh, to like 200 years in the future, what does it look like to you? I think that's a tough one. <laughs> I've seen some of your previous interviews and 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 obviously you mentioned yourself that if you just go back even just a hundred years how different the world was i think it's impossible to to predict is that the technological development is accelerating in a in a neck breaking speed and i think it's just it's just really difficult to 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 know what's down in the pipeline even in 50 years i think um and if we look back that 50 years ago we all assumed that there will be moon bases by now and the sad reality is that it isn't. Um, I definitely I expect moon bases, but again, <laughs> what I just said, it's a little bit. Uh, I don't know. It's I, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I would love to see Mars. I think it's a it's a tougher one, but I share Elon Musk's view that we need to spread. We need to become an interplanetary species because we are maximizing our survival chances and that's another that's another question that what's going to happen to that colony or that part of a human race that's going to live in a different planet with different gravitational forces different outside effect their kids and their kids and their kids are they going to be the, the same humans as we are or they are different so it's a lot of lot a lot of tough questions with regard to that but i think technology in terms of technology we definitely need to learn to live in space create artificial gravity wherever you are most likely when you're traveling but but again if you go to mars where i think the gravitational force force is one third i think 
then you 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 we know from the ISS that your body adopting from minute one, and <clears throat> and the human body gonna change. So how to tackle that? That's a different question. Is it tackleable? I don't know if it's a if it's an English word. Um, so yeah, but mining very important that we're not ruining planet Earth. What if we just remove most of the mining to space and then we just get our resources from space? Um, nanotechnology, I think, going to be very important. Robotics, maybe AI, but I'm a little bit skeptic. So I think a lot of things need to be solved, not even mentioning the society side. How I think it's like when European settlers went to America and they could start from a clean sheet I think we just hope that we're not going to drag all our negativity and, and our damaged past sort of in terms of politics and society to another place. Instead, they're going to start from fresh and they're going to try to create a society that's more fair, that's more looking after everybody. So I think I think these are, I'm not even mentioning law, obviously space law. I think it's becoming a big thing now. So yes, it's a complex thing. It's a complex thing, but it's happening. Um, do you think at some point humanity will be able to make it to another star? If we live for that long, yes. But I think I think our internal challenges are as a species. I think we are. I always like to think that human species is like a human. Like like an individual is, and we are we are just hitting the teenager sort of age, and we are kind of realizing the action, sorry, the effects of our actions, but we're not really taking full control of it because we are not matured enough, and I think that's going to be a breaking point. Either we make it or we break it, and. And that's 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 a tough one. That's a tough one. I would like to believe that if if we don't finish off ourselves in the next decades, then I think we can solve any problems. And I think we're gonna break the technological challenges to to get to another star. Yes, that would be amazing. Um, that would be amazing. Yes. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to take a trip to space, would you? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's uh, this question in me is always like if one of the Wright brothers comes to me in 1920 or 16 and says, hey, buddy, jump on our plane. I might say, mm, you know what? Let me just wait a few decades until it becomes much safer and then I'm coming. <laughs> but until then, I'm not in touch. I would like to see the overview effects. I, I, I'm on board. I think the people who are decision makers, they should, they should go at least on a space jump journey, either with Blue Origin or Virgin Galactic or any other company, and just to see that what they are dealing with. And probably they would understand the scale that, and the responsibility that they are carrying or they should carry sorry now you mentioned you you would do it when it's much safer and it's it's difficult to talk about safety but i think one way that we could sort of think about it is how many people need to go first without there being an issue before you felt comfortable is that a few hundred a few thousand a few million uh, <laughs> good question uh i i I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Definitely the thousands, I think. Definitely the thousands. Um, but if we think about the fact that even till today, I think there's not even a thousand people being to space. That's, um, hmm. I think we still have a lot to go. And I and I think SpaceX, um, especially now with the Falcon 9 rockets, I, I don't think people really understand the importance of that rocket that's actually i've just watched a couple of days ago the inspiration for netflix documentary again and and i think it's happening it's opening it's i think it's it's 
kicked the door open, I can say, and it's wide open now. And I think so many, I mean, Axiom has huge plans. Obviously, Blue Origin has huge plans. And I think as soon as, as the first private space station is going to open up and people just can just you pay the price, you do the basic training and off you go. I think exponentially is going to start growing. But I think, yeah, thousands, thousands, definitely. Definitely. I'm well, not sure everybody is up to the space travel. Would you? I, I don't know. I think before I started this project, I would told you yes. But as I hear other people's uh, hesitation and reasons and things, uh, you know, it makes me, I mean, you know, whenever Inspiration 4 came out, I, I, I donated St. Jude's hoping I would get uh, picked in the the drawing uh mm -hmm. but to, to go but that didn't uh that didn't happen but at least you know i i think i i think i'd go i think i would what would uh, be your your worry is it the 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 physical challenge or or just the safety or yeah no it's just the the physical challenge i don't like roller coasters so uh <laughs> you know there's there's that um and uh i, I think just just the fear of of uh, the experience, you know. The, mm -hmm. Even just getting into the rocket, I have a fear of heights, you know. So okay. I hear it's it's quite something else being on that tall platform, uh, and you know you can look look down. But I've also heard other astronauts who have gone several times say that they had similar fears and they were able to get mm -hmm. through them. Mm -hmm. um, and then also that um, what the <clears throat> the escape system that they have from the platform where it's like a, a zip line that they, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, so that, yes, I think for, for, for me is the G's. I, I'm, I'm not too sure how would I handle, I think you need to be physically absolutely healthy and, and, and mentally ready to, to not panic in certain situations. Hmm. And, and, and I'm not sure I have it. Um, yeah. Maybe in the future there will be an easier way to go to space, and then, and then we will. <laughs> Who knows? That's true. Well, it's been lovely talking to you, and that's pretty much uh, the questions I had for you. Um, did you have uh, any questions for me, or uh, anything that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to? Um, I just maybe briefly. What do you think about Starship? Because, because I don't know if you've ever been to. It's very close to you. I mean, relatively yeah. close, to, much closer than to, from Hungary. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there's my um, my front uh, page. So I, we... I do. <laughs> <laughs> so you have. So I, I've been twice. Twice. I, I went um, one time in uh, twenty um, eighteen, I believe. And then one time in oh, wow. 2021. So you've uh, seen the very early stage of, yeah. of is it wasn't even called Starbase. Then. No, no. Yeah. Just Boca Chica Village and, oh, wow. That's when so I should you... have been buying real estate there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, we just made a, a beautiful interview with Maria Pointer. And she actually talked through the early days and how she saw it. And I, I really encourage you to watch it because I think it's a journey everybody needs to see that how it changed. And especially now that you said that you've been there in 2018 when it was just uh, only intent and maybe the mock-up and that's it. So that, that's it. There was nothing else, I think. Or maybe not even that. I'm thinking. Yeah, Yeah, I'm trying to remember 2018 or 2019 but uh yeah it was definitely it was definitely a a long time ago yeah anyway yeah. it's crazy it's crazy so what do you think about that rocket i love it i mean it's <laughs> uh i mean it's it's going to be transformational i mean the fact it, i mean people look at this and they're like ah the rocket blew up uh, you know all this other good stuff but uh you know it Choose, uh, success is a choice, and it's a choice of not giving up and choosing to succeed. So it doesn't matter how many times it fails or blows up or doesn't do that. 
as long as you're committed to making it happen, uh, it's going to eventually happen. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, to have a hundred percent reusable rocket that would allow for you to not only get to orbit, but also point to point travel here on earth, uh, take you to the moon, uh, you know, take you to Mars. Yep. It's, it's, it's going to be uh, transformational. I mean, I think Starship is going to transform uh, the, the space industry at this decade in ways that uh, sort of the early web browsers did to the internet. You know? Yes. Yes. I mean, the cost per kilogram is going to come down. It's just some, some read. I mean, they're already talking about the expendable, expendable version of, of the second stage of the Starship. And they're talking about two, 250 tons, maybe 300 now, because it, there's a possibility that the second stage is going to grow a bit. I mean, this is just, I, I think if, if anybody ever read about what, what sort of capability previous rockets had expendable and this rocket going to have higher in reusable mode, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And yeah, I mean, the, the whole refueling stuff, I think I think that's very important. It's groundbreaking. And, and it's so nice to be there and actually talk to people who live there. And they are the same passionate about, about this rocket. Yeah, I'm really looking forward. I'm really looking forward. Can't wait. I, I hope that we can visit Florida and see one of the early launches of uh because i don't think we're going to travel down to starbase again but yeah i mean yes florida is a beautiful place and i want to see it taking off finally from there so fingers crossed <laughs> i know i really hope the next launch is uh, only a month or two away that would be that would be fantastic mm -hmm. it will be we're going to broadcast it for sure and i think you're going to watch it as well <laughs> Absolutely. I'm hoping to be down there in person. I would love to oh, do wow. that. But, uh, you know, I mean, like you said, it's close by. It's like a seven hour uh, car trip. Yes. Uh, or, you know, you get there in like 30 minutes by plane, but then you still need to rent a car. Yes. <laughs> anyway, but there's yes. That. Yes. But I think it's worth to encourage anybody who who ha who is playing with the idea to go there go there as you as long as you can because there might be a day when it's just it's not it's not open as it is today so for public so yeah that's true well thank you so much again for participating in my project and i have over 500 more days to go so if you know other people that might be willing to uh have a conversation about space even if they're not space people uh, mm -hmm. i like to capture that that view too I write you I write you a couple of names, I promise. Okay. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for having me. It's a pleasure. And and good luck with the project. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Well, have a good rest of your day. Thank you very much, Chichi. Take care, Nathan. Bye-bye.